So in order to take chess notation, you obviously need to know how to set up a board properly. And the first part of setting up a board is knowing where to sit in relation to the board. You can't just sit anywhere, believe it or not. There needs to be a light square on the right side. Let me repeat that again. You need a light square on the right side. So you see right here, there's a light square on the right side, so we know it's set up properly. All right, you better not put this on YouTube and auto-tune me, but there's a silly song that I used to teach little kids younger than you, but who knows, maybe it'll help you remember. And all you gotta say is, you need a light square on the right side. You need a light square on the right side. That's a good way to remember how to set up a board properly. And that becomes really important when you don't have um, chest notation on the side of the boards. So you'll notice here, there's numbers and letters on the board. The numbers are what we call ranks, and the letters are what we call files. And white always gets set up on the first and second ranks, and black always gets set up on the seventh and eighth ranks. So there's two things you need to look for on the chessboard. One is there needs to be a light square on the right side, and then also, white's going to be on ranks 1 and 2, and black's going to be on ranks 7 and 8. So let's just see what that looks like. There you go. Now that you know what ranks and files are, ranks being the horizontal rows and files being the vertical rows, now we can also identify what to call each square. I like to call it the address of the square. So for example, let's take this dark square right here. The name of this square is C5. You always say the letter first, so if you, if you notice, it's in the C file. So this vertical row, the C file. And it's on the fifth rank, so it's C5. If we go over here, it's called G7. Now sometimes people say 7G. That's incorrect. This is G7. Over here, E, the E file, and the eighth rank, so that's E8. Now we're going to learn how to write the notation for the actual chess pieces. So this is obviously a rook, otherwise known as a castle, and the letter for rook is capital R. For a knight, sometimes people call it a horse, we're going to call it a knight, capital N. So the word knight starts with K, K-N-I-G-H-T, but because king also starts with K, we use capital N for knight. Okay, bishop, B, capital B. Queen, capital Q, and King, capital K. Now let's just look at it all together. So we have K, Q, R, B, N. Okay, so now we're going to learn about the other symbols involved in chess notation. And they're all right here. Capture, check, double check, checkmate, castling, kingside, castling, queenside, and en passant. If you don't know what en passant is, don't worry about it. We're going to learn more about that in a later lesson. Double check is when you make a move that puts your opponent's king in check twice at the same time. So now I also want to show you what are called annotations. So they're not notations, which is when we're writing down the moves. Annotations is when somebody analyzes a chess game and then they add their analysis using annotations. So you don't need to know these for class, but I want you to know that they existed and what they were in case you ever came across them. So in chess, a blunder is like a really big mistake, usually something that could potentially lose you the game. A mistake is exactly what it sounds like, a bad move, but not the end of the world. A dubious move is one that you can't necessarily concretely call it a mistake. You can't say that this is why it's a mistake, but it just doesn't seem right. Something seems off. Interesting means you're not sure if it's good or bad, but it's certainly clever. It's certainly kind of an interesting idea. Good is self-explanatory, it's a good move, and brilliant is when you find a move that's very creative and hard to see and conveys a very significant advantage. Okay, so these are the ones that you need to know for class. Capture, check, checkmate, castling, kingside, and castling, queenside. Now we're going to put everything we learned together and take chess notation for an actual game. Remember, when you take chess notation, you're taking notation both for your moves and for your opponent's moves. So let's see what it looks like. So the first thing you need to know is when you make a pawn move, there's no uppercase letter to indicate 
that you're moving upon. Instead, you just write the square that the pawn goes to. Its final address is what I like to call it. Its final destination. So in this case, we write E4. See right here, E4? Because that's the square the pawn went to. And we know it's a pawn move because there's no uppercase letter in front of the square's address. So this move right here, E5. Now we're moving a knight. So now we're going to need an uppercase letter indicating what piece we're moving. So capital N for knight, F3. And the way you would, you would say it if you were talking to somebody is knight F3. Now, knight C6, bishop B5. So now we're moving a bishop, so we have a capital B, and then the square that it went to, B5. Knight F6, knight C3, D6. So again, a pawn move, so we just write the square. Now, kingside castling. So 0-0 zero zero for kingside castling. Let's do bishop e6. And now I'm going to show you a capture and a check. So this bishop's going to take this knight. We write capital B for bishop, lowercase x for capture, and then the square that it wound up on, c6. So capital B for the bishop, X because it captured something, and C6 where it wound up. And then we write a plus because the black king is in check. So now the B pawn recaptured. So we write lowercase b to indicate, it's, indicate that it's the B pawn. And then we write a lowercase x and then C6 for the square that it went to. Now let's play D4. And now I'm going to show you another pawn exchange so you can... Get familiar with how to write that. E takes d4 because it's the e pawn and it's taking on d4. Okay, so the rest of the moves I'm going to show you are not necessarily good moves. I just want to make sure that I show you all the different kinds of symbols in chess notation that I expect you to know for class. All right, so let's move a rook. We haven't moved the rook yet, so rook e1, capital R, and then the square it went to, e1, so lowercase e1. Knight g4. You know what? We're going to move the rook back. Rook f1. Capital R, f1. Now let's move this knight. Actually, you know what? I want to show you guys something else that's kind of cool. Oh, it's black's move. Sorry. Um, I'll just make any old move. All right, c5. Now I'm going to move this knight here. Knight e2. And now I'm going to make another just random move. c6. And the reason why I put this knight here is to show you that both these knights can capture this pawn if they wanted to. So you need to indicate in chess notation which knight captures this pawn if, if that happens. So for example, let's say this knight captures. We would write knight e takes d4. So we write e to indicate that it was the knight on the e file as opposed to the f file. You don't need to write e2 because... We already know which knight it is just by saying E. So knight, capital N, e, lowercase e for which knight, lowercase x for captures, and then d4. Now let's, oops, you know what? Let's see what it would look like if this knight took. Capital N for knight, lowercase f for which knight, lowercase x for capture, and then d4, the square it went to. Okay. Now let's say black comes here. Queen h4. So first queen move. Capital Q and then h4 the square it went to. And now let's do bishop f4. And now I'm going to show you queenside castle. So castling on the side that the queen starts on is called queenside castling. This down here was kingside castling. And queenside castling is 0 0 0. So we'll just make another move. Queen d3. And now, oop, it's not quite checkmate. <laughs> okay. Pawn here, g5. Bishop takes g5, and now queen takes h2, checkmate. And the checkmate symbol is the hashtag symbol, otherwise known as the pound symbol. All right, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Remember, when you come to class, you need to hand in a piece of paper that either has a question on it, meaning you have a question about something in the video, 
or you at least need to tell me something that you didn't already know. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you soon.